Hey, what's going on everyone? Dustin here, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I have a special guest, Spencer Howard. Spencer, how you doing, man? Doing well, man, thanks for having me back. Of course, always a pleasure to have you on the channel. And I brought Spencer on today because the other day, actually for the last couple of weeks, I've noticed Spencer has made a couple of comments or posts over on his Instagram account talking about chase points and why he has started, I think, to see them as maybe as an overrated currency. Is that, do I have that accurate? Yeah, it's uh, it's been a, I feel like it's a long time coming. I haven't posted about it, but I've been thinking about it for probably a year. So it was uh, one of my, I don't know, it's, it seems like it'd be controversial, but the response was okay. So nobody was, see, nobody was screaming. <laughs> See, I've been on the bandwagon for quite a while now that chase points. I mean, it's, I think I did my first video like a year and a half or two years ago that I have been considering chase points, a glorified cashback program. <laughs> and I stick That's to it. it. I mean, I, I just, I feel like they've just turned into this glorify. I mean, you call Delta like a glorified coupon yeah. program, right? This is like a glorified cashback program that they've just slowly devolved into. Yeah, and it's it's not even their fault in some ways. Um, one of their big partners, and I think one of their most popular partners is United Mileage Plus. And United in, I mean, God, this was like early in the pandemic, devalued in the middle of it. And I was like, well, that's a stupid move. move. Who does that? Same day, sent an email about how much they care about their customers. I was like, guys, you, you need someone to talk to you about how to do this. But right. that, I mean, that was a big hit. United devaluing and they had previously, I mean, it wasn't the first time they devalued in the last couple of years. They lost Korean Air, SkyPass as a, as a transfer partner, which I know a lot of Americans don't know, or not they don't know, they're just not familiar with it, but it had really nice redemptions if you're going to Asia. Um, even on some partners, it had some really good redemptions and they lost that in I think mid 2018. And it's mm -hmm. just kind of, it's just been going downhill for them since then as program, as other programs devalue and they've lost this like unique transfer partner option. I just don't feel like they have, they don't really pack the same punch. Um, and they're just, I feel like there's just a lot of, <laughs> they're really riding on Hyatt's coattails at this point. Like Hyatt is a great Absolutely. transfer partner. So it's, it's, I mean, it's the best hotel transfer partner, in my opinion. I know Amex transfers to Hilton and Marriott. Chase also transfers to Marriott and IHG, but like they're just not at the same level as Hyatt. So, Totally agree. I think the Hyatt program definitely is keeping them in that echelon of where people want them. And for someone like myself, and I think quite a few people who like follow the channel who are economy flyers, the reserve at 1.5 cents per point, they're yeah. using the travel portal more frequently for that uplift, which is why I've really considered them more of a cash back program because yeah. you're basically using your points as well, yep. cash back. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, speaking of economy, like if I were going to say like where the real value is, it's for people who have the Southwest companion pass. Mm -hmm. I think you can still transfer points to Southwest. And even though you're not, you might not get that 1.5 cents um, that you would in the portal with a Sapphire reserve because you're getting that two for one ticket that can totally be worth it. I completely acknowledge that. But again, you're looking at these like niche opportunities for people who are into points. And I just, as personally as someone who fly like focuses on flying internationally and like business or hopefully first, um, <laughs> like it Southwest isn't going to do anything for me. Sure. I can use it for a positioning flight, but it's just, it's not going to pack the same punch as I said. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I think with United, they moved to that like pseudo pseudo dynamic award pricing where it was it's like weird. 10% what they were doing. And the excursionist perk is still really nice, but when you account for the increased cost in miles, yeah. it's not as lucrative as it used to be, I feel. Not even close. I mean, I always tell people if you have, and this is again, I because my audience is mostly kind of international premium cabin, like if you want to fly business class to Europe round trip, it's 154,000 United miles transferred from Chase um, to fly on Star Alliance partners like Lufthansa, Swiss, TAP, whatever. If you find a ticket that is, and you have a Sapphire Reserve and it's $2,310 or less, you will use fewer points than if you just transferred points. And you book, but that will cover the taxes and fees too, unlike an award. Yeah. Like you don't have to pay the taxes and fees. You earn redeemable miles on top of it. So, like, why would you transfer? Which again goes to your point. It's kind of like cash at this point. And they haven't done anything in recent years. I know they're bringing on Aeroplan later this year, yeah. which that to me, the announcement like a year in advance just struck me as odd. 
it made me wonder, were they going to pull out from like uh, American Express or even Capital One to where you can't transfer to Aeroplan anymore to give Chase that unique partner? But they're I don't, not. I don't, but it That's doesn't seem like it. Yeah. Amex and has said they're going to keep them or Aeroplan as a partner. And again, that it's, it's another partner that doesn't set Chase apart. I mean, Chase added, I mean, I remember Chase added Emirates and I was like, well, yeah, but you know, Amex is already there. And you know, you, at one point they added Iberia and I was like, yeah, but Amex is already there. Like every time they've added something, it's just been redundant, which is great. Like it's more options and I like more options, but you're not really setting yourself apart. And you also don't have the partners that provide those kind of fun aspirational um, award ticket options where you can kind of uh, kind of work the arbitrage to your favor. So oh, it's just- absolutely. So what is it about Chase Points that made you feel like they've just become overrated? Is it just or overvalued? Maybe I want to say overrated might be a little bit harsh, but yeah. like what 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 was the moment it's where overrated. you're just like these are just not <laughs> these just aren't as good as other programs out there anymore? Yeah, I think I mean again, like say, talking about the the partners is a huge aspect of it. I think if you look at where people spend much of their money. Um, travel for someone like me might be higher because I travel a lot in normal times, but other people, not so much. And I think a lot of it is like, okay, they have uh, restaurants or dining, uh, dining bonus category, but the Sapphire Reserve is 3X and the annual fee is 550. We can get into like credits that offset it, but it's 550 annual fee up front. And now they've made their no annual fee, Chase Freedom Flex and Freedom Unlimited, earn 3x to 3%. But if you have the Sapphire preferred, only a $95 annual fee, it's the func- it's functionally the same thing. So now you've got, you're basically matching a free card with your like your flagship high-end card. And then that card also gets like 3x at drugstores and 5x in the Chase Travel Portal, while the Sapphire Reserve is 1x at drugstores and 3x in the Chase Travel Portal. We haven't even gotten into the fact that they don't have any card with a bonus in the grocery category. I mean, they've been running these like month long or three month long, like temporary, but I'm like, who wants to keep up with all that? Like uh, Amex gold, Forex up to $25,000 a year on groceries, super I, easy. I've been saying for a while, they need to revamp the preferred. The preferred I feel is obsolete now. Years ago, it was like the card, right? You got double points. Then they released the reserve and the reserve was like hot commodity. Oh, it was the 3X, card. 3X. And then you get cards, start upping the multipliers. And I don't think Chase can up the multipliers on the reserve without cutting back that 1.5 cent per point value. And that, I think if they do that, it's hard, It's a harder sell, right? Like yeah. 1.25 for the reserve, like it just doesn't seem as good for people I mean, using them apart. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I remember, mean the, remember the old prestige when you could get, what was it 1.6 on American airline flights? Then it went down to like 1.3, and then it just became. Yeah, that was a sad, progressive devaluation of that card. And that was only like the tip of the iceberg. But I think that's what, I mean, the City Prestige earns 5X on, you know, air travel, hotels, dining. And no, you don't have that portal rate, but I mean, that's a high earn rate. The Amex Platinum, again, I mean, that's more of a perks card. Uh, But what's, Mm -hmm. and it doesn't have that portal bump that you get with Chase. So, that is a that's a valuable aspect of of their kind of of the card, but it's not enough. And like if you're trying right. to set yourself apart, you don't need to just be kind of like sliding by. You kind of actually need to do something that gets people to really want to use your card. I'm over here like half the time. I feel like I'm thinking about getting getting rid of it or downgrading it um, to a either some kind of freedom or a, or maybe a sapphire preferred. But I just yeah. It just gets harder and harder to justify keeping it. It's so hard to justify. And to go back to your point on the prestige, 5X on airfare. Well, if I redeemed it through their portal one cent per point, that's still 5% back. The yeah. reserve is 4.5% when you yeah. redeem it. So you still come out ahead. I think the funny numbers of 1.5, 1. 1.25, 1, yeah. 1 cent per point. But if you have the reward plus, you get 10% back. So those funny numbers start to mess with people's value, I think, in their head. Yeah. And again, it's a great perk. I just think if they did that plus something else, they could actually compete. 
Um, yep. I just feel like they've kind of been riding the high of like, they came out the Sapphires or excuse me, the originally the Sapphire preferred. And that was like groundbreaking for the point. Yeah. And they came out the Sapphire reserve, same kind of thing. People were stoked. Like, I mean, I've never seen so much buzz about a credit card oh, and even since. And that was, that was what summer, fall 2016. Like it's it was years ago, five years. And that's great. But like, you think about it's with like half a decade <laughs> and yeah. Like you haven't done anything to kind of break the mold. Meanwhile, I think Amex has really been trying to revamp things, even if I don't agree with every move they make. They they have been trying to kind of get people's attention. So and in their case, they went a little too far once with the Amex business platinum. They did that 50% rebate if you oh, so went to good. the portal. And it was great. I absolutely love that. And then they dropped to 35%, which is still good, but it was just like you could tell they tried something. They're like, oh, that was we gave a little too much. Um that's how it goes, but they're trying stuff. And I feel like Chase has been riding the high of just being the innovative one, but they're not innovative anymore. And I mean, you just have, <laughs> yeah, it just, it's, it's relying in some cases on, it's a great beginner program. I still think it's a great place to start. I still think the Sapphire Preferred is a great, a great place to start as you're getting mm-hmm. to the points uh, kind of game. And you kind of, you need to learn about transfer partners and port like, bank travel portals and perks and benefits and i still think the sapphire preferred allows somebody who is very new to kind of get a feel for it and decide where they want to go whether they care about chase 524 rule and maxing out bonuses or they just want to get a couple cards and stick with those i still think it's a really solid place to learn but that doesn't need to stay there forever it's an easy program i mean southwest it's revenue based jet blue revenue based Although I am pretty interested to see what the redemptions will be like for American Airlines using JetBlue miles. Hopefully, if it's it probably gonna be terrible, but if it can at least match mint, you know, mint or even economy at like 1.4 or one cent per point, it could be a nice backdoor way to redeem JetBlue for American. Hopefully it's at least there. We'll have to wait and see, I think. Too optimistic, optimistic. right? (laughs) Um, but I mean a lot of their programs, you know, IHG trash. I mean, it's just trash. <laughs> Marriott, you know, can be hit or miss for people. I'm not the biggest fan with, you know, being Bon Void, but there's some value and there. Mar- Marriott's good if you like stay at Marriott's for work and you're just yeah. putting a lot of cash down at Marriott's. Like that's, there, there's value there, but transferring chase points, not no. usually. And it's just, it's just hard for me to keep, you know, I think for them, the saving grace is their 524. Mm-hmm. If they didn't have that rule... You. It forces you. It forces you to either make the commitment to stick with Chase, and everyone's like, well, I got to stay under 524. No, blow past that puppy. <laughs> Once you hit 524, screw it. There are better cards out there. Yeah. And, but that's, I think, the key for people who are getting, getting into points. Some people are, they're kind of chasing those sign up bonuses, the welcome bonuses. Others are just looking for like three. I mean, this is even high for, I would call it normal people, but three or four cards. Um, mm. I like to call them card hubs and you just kind of like, <laughs> you just like, that's, that's your, it's just like an air, it's like an airline. You have a hub and that's where you right. focus your attention. And mm-hmm. I, I think I'm kind of a mix of the, the two. I have way more credit cards than the average person, but I'm not just like constantly trying to apply. I'm basically building these hubs of points where I'm trying to like maximize my normal spend and I'll supplement with a new card here and there based on a bonus or some new perks or something. Oh, totally. Um, but you have to start, like, if you want to kind of, even if you want to do what I'm doing, which is not kind of constant uh, new cards, you you have to decide if you want to skip Chase by doing other mm-hmm. things. You can't start somewhere else and come back and go, oh, I'd actually like, no, Chase doesn't care. <laughs> American Express, at least, like, if you got the bonus, like, we'll give you the card again. You're still not going to get the bonus unless you find, like, a no lifetime language offer. They're cool about that. Chase is like, screw off, we're, we're, you're dead to us. And and there's, and Amex doesn't restrict you if you like started with Chase or Bank of America or City, and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, I'd actually like to do Amex. They're not going to go, nope, because you tried others. We don't want you to try us. Yeah. Like again, Chase is well within its rights to you know have its restrictions, but that does kind of put us in the position of like, you either got to st- decide up front, do you want to try Chase? Yeah. Chase holds more rewards points. I think they're valuable enough that you don't necessarily want to skip them. Right. But that doesn't mean that you need to become so obsessed and locked into it that you can't branch out to Amex membership rewards or city thank you points. If Hyatt were to leave the program for whatever reason, someone <laughs> someone buys them. They they move over to city or let's say Capital One. Capital One's making moves. That'd be hilarious. 
You want to be hilarious. Yeah, I agree. But do you think you would not tell people like you should start with Chase now? Like there's value there, right? I get it. But like if their most valuable partner leaves, would you still be like, you need to start with Chase? Or is it kind of like, ooh, that's a tough one? It, I think if you're going to get deep into the points thing, you still like why pass up on the points? Um, enough. And that's just, it's just a, it's a, yeah, it's a very practical matter, but I think mm -hmm. even more so you have to be ready to move on from there if that happens. Because if they lose Hyatt as a transfer partner, I'm not saying that's happening. No, there's no rumors about that. No, no rumors. Everyone, everyone breathe. There's a lot of people <laughs> are like, oh my God. Um, but I imagine they would then lose the Hyatt co-branded card, which is like one more chase card that you don't, you can't get. And so now you're kind of looking at Southwest and United cars, maybe Marriott in addition to the ultimate rewards cards. And yeah, I think you just quickly move on from chase at that point, <laughs> you get what you can. And, you know, maybe you continue using them. If you are somebody who needs something about within their program in particular, like Southwest or maybe United miles, because you, fly united or star lines for work and have a lot of miles earned just because of that sure maybe stick with chase for a bit but yeah i think that would hurt them a lot i think it would totally hurt them do you think capital one making moves right now is going to push chase because like the argument is always chase and american express and i feel like they each have pros and cons you know american express it's higher cost for their setups i mean you can get the credits of the ubers and the sacks this app and all that crap you gotta put in the work. Um, you gotta put in the work to get it. Like it, nothing comes easy. Chase makes it easy. City, I think City's got some great cards. They just they're City, and they just don't know what they want to do with their lives yet. They're like, when they grow up, maybe they will. And then so Capital City, One's like, I love that you've skipped past City as like an alternative. You just like, <laughs> I'm like the City champion, but it's. Uh, I, I think totally City points. Now. I think City points are great. I I think for what they're looking for, it definitely takes someone with a more astute knowledge to to make it happen. And I think for the majority of people, they're not willing to do it. Someone like, I think someone like you or myself, um, we're willing to put in that work. Yeah. Um, I, mean, and I think their just... program is great. I mean, the premiere, I think the city premiere is probably solid card. a solid card. If they added travel protections, it's a no brainer Again, for someone them back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's um, I, I think city has a lot of potential it's just like you said it doesn't know what it wants to do um yeah. i mean it's gone through periods where it's just like we're just not gonna offer a sign up bonus on this card and it's just like which is basically saying we don't really care if you get this card or not yeah and i was just like okay but it's your flagship card this is the prestige but okay whatever um but i do think that is allowed capital one now as it is changed its redemption or excuse me its transfer rates to some of its partners from one to 0.75 to one to one to kind of match what you see with chase amex and city all of a sudden i think capital one is maybe leapfrogged city in getting people's mm -hmm. attention um i mean their cards are only 2x or two percent uh on everything but it's simple and you're never earning one point so yeah it does start to kind of shake things up a little bit they've added partners they're still not one-to-one -one on all partners so i'd love to see that move and i know i mean they've definitely been trying to shake things up the last couple of years um so i think if they can they will um yeah it's going to be interesting and i i do see more interest from readers that message me uh in the capital one venture specifically i mean the bonus has been good recently i i think people are always kind of keeping an eye on like the spark miles which is another opportunity they all pull, right. like you can pull all those points go to the same programs everything so capital one's you know, they're trying, they, they haven't done anything crazy yet. Like add some like really great bonus categories. I think if they do that, it's going to get really interesting. Um, I right. think more than Chase will be trying to figure out how to respond at that point. Because there's the rumor of a premium Capital One card coming. I'm curious what that'll be. <laughs> I've, it, rumors for a while, right? So like, I'm curious what that'll be. You know, you can move the cash back from the Saver, Saver One over to the Venture card. So that's nice. So you get like the 3% yeah. at no fee um moved is over that working for everyone now i actually don't know i remember um that it's working. i've had people message me saying it's been working i know okay. it was working a couple of years ago when i talked about it yeah. and then it's been picking up traction so okay. hopefully they don't kill it off but it's a nice yeah. benefit if they wanted to like really kind of shake things up honestly not even trying to get into like travel as a bonus category because they have the 2x but even just like grocery and dining at like 4x kind of like the Amex gold, but then having two X on everything else could be like a very compelling offer. Uh, yeah. I mean, you could, I mean, but I also think that there's a lot of people who are spending a lot more on groceries and 
dining out than they are on travel. So that's right. There's some appeal to that. I mean, you could even throw in like entertainment or something, maybe gas. I mean, depending on where you live, like I live in DC and I don't drive a ton. So like gas bonus categories don't do a ton for me. Right. But I know that, but if I still live back in Kentucky, like where I grew up, like, <laughs> Yeah. You're spending money on gas. If, if you would, if you'd give me like a four X on gas, groceries, and dining, like that'd be my jam all day. And I know that's you know four X is asking a lot, but Amex Gold has pulled it off, so it's not. Four X would be great if this premium card could have three or four X, maybe a slight yeah. elevated instead of like a one cent per point for travel, maybe one point two five or. Yeah. I don't think it'll go one point five. That'd be really rich. Would be nice, uh, yeah. but if it could do no one point. No complaints, but if it did 1.25, I think it could be with a, you know, an annual fee with some a credit in there. Um, they are building those Capital One lounges. It would seem to be like trying to rival Washington the Centurion. Dallas. Yeah, like they're I'm trying to like to rival Centurion lounges. Um, yeah. I'll, I'm generally curious on what they're going to do. Yeah, yeah. Also in DC, they have the Capital One cafes, which <laughs> were kind of a place where you could kind of come and work and if you want get some like financial advice, I obviously I <laughs> they have not been active in the last year, but they were cool spaces. I've been to one of I've went to one of them here in DC and it was a cool spot. Um so I think they're they have the potential. It's just a matter, I think the world kind of getting moving again will uh right. we'll see what they can kind of come up with. And then with Capital One making these moves, I know Wyndham's not the highest priority for you know aspirational travelers, but Wyndham's not a bad program for budget travelers or, you know, maybe even fam traveling families. Yeah. But I think Capital One making these moves, I think has maybe needed to set the fire in their chase to do something because, I mean, I, I personally think Capital One's transfer partners are better outside of Hyatt than yeah. Chase's partners. Yeah, uh, I, especially if they hit that one-to-one -one on everything, that's when right. they'll really compete. In my totally mind. agree. Um, we'll see what happens. Like if they can get Aeroplan to one to one, that would be huge. If they can get, they added Turkish as a partner, but if they get that to one to one transfer ratio, that'll be huge. That's a huge one. Turkish, I think Turkish is an undervalued program, um, especially if you're like looking to position over to Europe or even Hawaii right now. That loophole is still. It's not a loophole. It's not a program. It's in it, the term. Pro... <laughs> Just because something is good doesn't make a loop make it a loophole. Everybody always thinks. I I feel like it, <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Um, what like in your mind? Pills I'll die on now. <laughs> I see I think of it as loophole because I don't think maybe when they were thinking about the program to make it I think someone looked at it so we're just gonna make the U.S. all one and then some someone found it was like wait a minute they're considering Hawaii here so I wouldn't be shocked if they separated Hawaii out and maybe fixed their mistake or I don't want to say a mistake but um <laughs> the the great sweet spot we'll call it great yeah I mean but at the same time if you're Turkish like the appeal for Americans is often the, is that option. And like right now, City is a one-to-one -one transfer partner with Turkish. Is City gonna yeah. buy, is, it, is, Tid, is City going to have the partnership so that they can buy miles from Turkish to give to their members when they wanna transfer points if there's not a compelling reason to do so. So Agreed. a lot of these foreign carriers make a good chunk of money from being able, from basically getting Americans to buy miles from them, so. That's oh, my totally agree. That's my like keep it the same, Turkish. You're doing great. <laughs> don't don't, don't screw us up, Turkish. I don't, even, I don't even use I haven't even used that option, but I just, you know, I I like that they have it. It's just something that makes them different. Um, what do you think Chase needs to do in order to improve their value or at least move back up the ladder for award travelers? Because we know for their travel portal, it's a great option. Up to, you know, the 1.5 cents per point. I don't think anybody can say it's not the best value for a travel portal, um, just because that 1.5 is so good. But for award travelers who utilize transfer partners, what do you think needs to happen for Chase to kind of move back up? Because I feel like they're just kind of s slowly falling down the ladder here. Yeah, I mean, like we said, bonus categories, they need to kind of tweak some of that mm -hmm. just to get people to want to use the cards in the first place. Um, and not something like, it's gotta be something useful, I think. I, I yeah. think. Entertainment again is possible. Grocery, I think, is almost a must. But like, I, I feel like in the last year we've seen a lot of temporary stuff. But it's not like that's not always super useful for people. Um, right. And that I, while I think banks and airlines and hotels also always kind of say like, oh, more choice is better. And I'm like, well, yeah, if you're giving me the option to earn like a bunch of points if I go to wineries, 
that's great, but like that's not a regular purchase for me. Like, right. <laughs> oh, I earned ten x at wineries. Well, like, I don't know about you, but I'm not at a winery like every day or every week. Like, this is not. I feel a like I need thing. to be, but I'm so, not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fatherhood for you. Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but on the on the re- the transfer partner side for like award redemptions, I, I just I feel like they need to get a program that is not from Amex and not mm-hmm. part of city. And I think, I mean, actually I'll take that back. If they got ANA, which, a, which is a, an Amex mm-hmm. partner and Chase has done a really good job with their infrastructure on transferring points. It's generally faster than Amex um, mm-hmm. in a lot of cases, at least uh, I think ANA would be a great partner. Or, I mean, if they really wanted to go crazy, get Japan airlines, good luck. I've never seen right. They're just a Marriott partner and that's it. But I think that could be fun. Um, just, change just shake it up give give people some more options um aziana is getting bought by korean, korean right getting merged into korean so i don't really see that happening but i would love to see korean come back um even aeroflot out of like russia could be fun uh right. so it's a marriott partner and they've got some like it's got a decent rate it's like fifty five thousand miles one way in business from the u.s to moscow um, okay they still charge like the surcharge so it's like 280 bucks or something but like not terrible it's a better redemption rate it's a better redemption rate than your other option with like flying blue um so i just again like trying to like branch out side of the kind of the norm um, right but but again at least pick up some of the partners that are valuable that city and amex have like a and a or life miles or turkish or something like take the good ones from the other programs but about i just said yeah. there's been just a huge lack of unique partners i mean yeah. southwest is good but it's very limited in what it's going to offer someone. So they need to offer like some niche, I mean, some unique program that isn't part of someone else. And I think that's what they're lacking. They've always been like, we're going to add this program. Well, JetBlue after you lost Kareen wasn't exactly an even trade. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, I remember they added that. They're like, so excited we're adding JetBlue. And I was just like, really? And so yeah. like these programs are adding, they make it seem like they're they're great. And I mean, it's nice to see more partners or potential or options for chase yeah but they're not special <laughs> yeah more options more options are great but like more bad options doesn't really do a lot um, absolutely so that's that's the nature of the beast um so yeah i think there's just it's not necessarily they need unique partners because i think obviously marriott covers a lot <laughs> marriott has right. a ton of partners but they should just look at that list and see what could be interesting and uh Japan Airlines would be interesting. Uh, Japan Airlines would be would interesting. Be interesting. Alaska, yeah. especially, I will say Alaska would be particularly particularly interesting because they're now part of One World, and British Airways and Iberia as One World partners, um, who are also part of the Chase Ultimate Awards mm-hmm. ecosystem, are not generally great for long haul no. award bookings. There's some short haul uses. Iberia itself, if you're flying on Iberia, has some good bookings. Uh, or good award booking options, but there's not that many good ways to use them on partners from the right. U.S. It just the rates are so high, and BA always tax on all all the surcharges, and that's a nightmare. Yeah, so I think having Alaska as it's now partnering with you know Qatar Airways, and it already had a partnership with Finnair, but it's now part of One World, so it'll. I hope hopefully strengthen that partnership and the partnership with Cathay Pacific and Japan Airlines. Like there's there's a lot there, and I think that's a particularly weak point. One world that is uh, that right. alliance uh, for Chase. So I think that could be a fun one. Alaska would be good. I, I don't. I think people have been wanting that for a long time. I don't know if I actually see that happening. I probably don't. But I think that would be interesting. Yeah. Because uh, it would strengthen uh, that that aspect of the program for them. Oh, absolutely. And I think that would get people excited, especially like the hardcore points of miles miles people. It would move Chase up so many people's Not even the hardcore, just anybody in the Pacific Northwest (laughs) or even just California. Like that, that would be my, that'd be the, I think the biggest move they could make. So what, so right now you're earning more American Express points as, as opposed to Chase? Yeah, I think my focus generally ends up being Amex and City, uh, City Mm -hmm. thank you points and Chase where I can get them. Um, yeah. I have a, I have more chase now than I have ever had actually, but I think that's more a function of the fact that I've been using other, um, 
other options from Amex and City, and I just haven't needed the Hyatt stays, so I haven't been transferring to Hyatt. I think I have 9,500 Ultimate Reward points remaining in my account. Wow, look at you. You're and going for that inbox zero kind of Inbox thing. zero for Chase. I mean, I've been using them for the pay yourself back and basically taking it out and just because I value them at 1.5 cents per point. So yeah. either I redeem it for travel or I just basically cash it out at 1.5 cents per point, do whatever the hell I want with it. So to me, it's a no brainer for I feel that. Like I, know, I feel like I know somebody who's talking about Chase points being glorified cash back. It's weird. It's people weird, right? Because like people are liking it. So for me, I think like if they really want to move it up, like like you, like like you were saying, better partners, better earning rates. I mean, you gotta add groceries. I mean, I groceries have. is a big one. I mean, how do you not have yeah. a permanent grocery category on like the ever dying preferred? I know the preferred is like a great starter <laughs> card because it's a yeah. lower annual fee. Doesn't have a lot of. It's got good travel protections. I give it that, but you're directly competing with the reserve all the time. And for me, it's just not great. I mean, I would take the ink preferred over the Sapphire preferred any day of the week. Yeah. It, it just overall is better. And even the freedom flex, like it's cell phone protection, five yeah. X categories, three X on dining. Like the only thing it's missing, which would be really great is if you could somehow, cause I know American express lets you transfer from the uh, everyday and the blue business plus to partners. If they could let you transfer from the the, the freedom oh, the flex. No annual fees. Yeah, it would that would be killer. That would actually be a nice benefit. At least yeah. even if it maybe like a reduced rate for people, like uh, City does with um, like the double cash, you can move over to JetBlue or just a limited program to transfer yeah. over. Yeah, I, I do understand that kind of wanting you to pair that no annual fee card. It gets you kind of deeper into the ecosystem. So I, I get what you're saying. I don't know no. if I <laughs> worry too much about it. Right. It's just like it's it's two cards like. I know most people aren't used to getting multiple cards, but you know, when you're in the points world, that's that's pretty basic. We all started with one and we just moved up to like 10 and 20 and 20. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so what are your thoughts on awards? So I know you're like you're like my go-to award travel guy if I have any yeah. questions. And I know I'm not the only one because you were just you're so knowledgeable. Where do you see award travel in the next year or two? Because like even when I float around on Twitter. There's been like a lot of award space, and then it seems like award space, everyone is so excited to get back out there. It's kind of drying up at a pretty rapid pace because people are, I think, just booking stuff to book it to get it out there. Yeah, I think it's going to be kind of interesting as we come out of the pandemic where airlines have, <laughs> they have fewer flights on the routes than mm -hmm. they did pre-pandemic. And then once they start filling up that flight, like say they have one flight on a route, they'll add a second flight. Okay. Um, but, but you're not going to go from like one full flight to two full flights. You're going to go from one full flight to like two partially full flights, which is then where you'll see, like, you could go from having no award space to then having award space on two flights or at least one flight, um, mm -hmm. because they're still trying to manage capacity. I won't, I would not be surprised to see that, uh, I, you know, leisure travel is like really coming back strong now. Um, assuming we don't have any, like, you know, breakthroughs of other waves and the pandemic, that will, I think, kind of continue. Um, business travel is not coming back that fast, though. And yeah. I know there's a lot of people who make very like definitive statements, like it's never coming back, or it's it'll definitely come back. I'm not convinced either way. Um, but that's, I think, while they're while they're figuring that out, there's going to be some opportunities. I also think it's a good idea to keep an eye on cash deals, especially as we're talking about with the Chase Portal. Um, if you're somebody who has the Amex Business Platinum, same kind of thing. There's a lot of cash deals where you can get more than one cent per point. Um, mm -hmm. And I think while they figure this stuff out, they're going to they're gonna have to run some fair deals at times. And I think that could be good for us. You just have to be aware of <laughs> when, they, when they drop those fair deals or just sit on Google Flights like I do a lot and just see what's going on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah I, I know you've been, that's, that's, you've sent out quite a few newsletters. So like, People who don't, who haven't seen, Spencer has a the Straight to the Points newsletter, which she'll talk about here in a couple of minutes, where he sends out these flight deals to people. And I mean, I've seen quite a few decent cash fares come across in the inbox to yeah, where- Just the other day, just the other yeah. day, it was about like $1,000 from New York to Scotland in business class. Um, that was insane. And I don't think it lasted more than 12 to 18 hours. Um, yeah. Like that was quick. Um, so yeah, only my premium members got that one. No, so with with the award space, you know, we've seen a few programs also devalue their points 
pretty quickly soon after travel started coming back. You know, we've seen Hilton add an extra tier to one, was it one or two properties? Delta make, I think, another devaluation. Do you think we're going to see more of these type of devaluations as there's kind of now this abundance of points that people weren't redeeming for the last year, year and a half? Or our program's going to kind of let this slide for a bit so people can redeem them, you think? Uh, I think, I mean, I tend to think that airlines will do it anything because they can, um, not necessarily because they should. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I won't be surprised to see airline. I mean, airlines devalue every so often anyway, but I won't be surprised to see it. And then they'll use whatever reason they have at hand. And I think they'll say, well, oh, there's all these points out there. And I was like, yeah, but you still control capacity. And hmm. people still only have limited time to travel and limited dates to travel. So you're never going to have, you know, oh, my God, they're booking awards. So we're not making money on cash tickets. And I'm like, well, you wouldn't re release the award space. So it doesn't right. like, eh, like you're not you're not going to do that. So I do. I, I expect it like anything normal. Uh, I'm a bit worried that they're going to use the uh, abundance of points that are out there now to just go for it. Um, but I haven't seen anything crazy yet. <laughs> Fair but enough. Always keeping an eye on it. And I, again, like I, I do think if you've gotten into the points game, you know, just before the pandemic, and then obviously through the pandemic, like if you've looked at award space, you're just like, wow, it's everywhere. And I'm like, that's yeah, not normal. Um, like it's it's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a trick. Um, but like the one that stands out to me is Qatar Airways has been releasing a lot of business class award space. And I like I feel like people are always like, oh, it's nothing special. And I was like, you just don't remember when that wasn't normal. Like you right. just you know, two seats on all these flights, like every, it's like almost every route, tons of dates available. That wasn't normal. And I, I still remember it was one of the first newsletters that I sent to my Straight to the Points members in 2018. I was sitting in Japan writing it, oddly enough, because I was awake <laughs> in the middle of the night. And it was like this really great opportunity to book four seats in business class on Qatar Airways. And it was all these dates. And it would kind of sporadically come and go, but then there'd just be like nothing. It just just complete emptiness when it came to business class award space. And I remember friends of mine like reaching out and be like, have you seen anything recently? And that's just the way it was. And I think you will see that and you will see that happen again. Like there, it will not be as kind of free flowing Turkish. I think I've seen some routes where like Turkish airlines award space was great. And then it was just kind of gone. Yeah. Um, so I just don't, I, don't be surprised to see that. I saw we've seen that with Lufthansa recently with business class award space. So previously you'd see a ton of it. So you oh, actually another good one, United. I, I'd in the last year was seeing tons of it. But in normal times I didn't. And now mm -hmm. I'm not seeing as much. There's a sure. lot of variability to it. It's a little bit of a game. It's not meant to be, you know, plug and play. Right. Um, you gotta do the work. I try I try to make it easier for people, but yeah, it's just, it's, I feel like I had, I haven't heard the term hunting for a warden space in a long time. And that's what it used to feel like. You were kind of hunting for it. Right. Um, so it's just, it's, I imagine things will change. I imagine we'll see less space at some point. Um, but that doesn't mean that like, oh, points are worthless. There's no reason to use these. It's just kind of starting to shift your mindset around to like, okay, you got to look for when it's available, be flexible with your travel dates. And if you're not, of course, it's going to be a little more difficult. I know teachers right. really run into this when they've only got summers, and that can be particularly tough. I always tell people just in general, like the more flexible you can be with your travel plans, whether it's dates, class of service, points you can use, whatever, the more flexibility you have, the easier it will be. And I, I think that that's how you really win the game, right? It's, it's just Absolutely. flexibility wins the game. If you're too rigid, yep. it's going to be a lot harder to find, yeah. you know, especially business class seats. I feel like economy is more widespread. A great example that a lot of people run into here is like American miles. They're like, oh, American miles are worthless. And I was like, that's because you were searching for an American Airlines flight. They want right. to fly a business class in American Airlines or something to Asia. And I was like, no, no, go look for like Cathay Pacific or Japan Airlines. And they'll, they'll be like, oh, wow, there's so much space. And I was like, yeah, stop trying to like, don't get so tunnel visioned into one thing that you forget that you have all these options. Who was it? Is it? JT over on Twitter has been like posting like some crazy like American Airlines like weird pricing where like economy is like 185,000 but business is, or business or first is like 75 or 80. So like there's deals out there yeah. for American. I, I think in some ways 
I, in some in some cases, I think that's because they are starting to get a lot of leisure travelers, and there are a lot of leisure travelers who are buying the cheapest seat, seat they can find, so they're filling up the economy cabin, but yeah. they're not necessarily filling up the business class cabin. And like, don't forget, airlines aren't losing money because you use miles. Like they sold the miles. <laughs> like if you right. you've got points or miles, or you've got if you're getting miles somehow from a credit card, whether it's directly from a co-branded credit card, just from your spend, or you have transferred points to an airline, that bank has then bought the mile. Like they've gotten paid. It may not be as high as they would if they sold that seat, but they're not selling it. Right. They're getting something out of this. Yeah, it's don't you don't have to feel bad for airlines. You're not getting something for free. <laughs> I, I, I don't so. feel bad for them whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> All right, last question for you. How would you wh where would you rank? So you get the four big flexible currencies. You got Chase, American Express, City, and I'll even throw Capital One in there. How would you rank them? Uh, I would put Amex at the top. But I mean, this okay. is, again, let's let's I should <laughs> set parameters here. This is like for my travel. Okay. Uh, no, fair enough. I fly like international business class or first class when it's available. Um, that's like, that's kind of my frame of reference. Uh, I Amex is really big for me, uh, mm -hmm. especially if you have the business platinum and can utilize both the transfer partners and the 35% rebate uh, on premium cabin tickets book through the portal. So that's like a big one for me. Um, because I'm like super nerdy with points, City is probably my second most used program. Uh -huh. um, they have partners that most people don't think about, uh, Turkish Air, uh, like Turkish Miles and Smiles, Qatar Privilege Club. People don't think about these programs. I do. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, absolutely. They, they've been they've been really useful for me. So that that and then, I mean, I guess for me, Chase is it's like two A or three. It's not. It's okay. definitely not second on its own, but it might be up there. Just it, it just depends if I'm trying to book some like really nice Hyatt stay or something, and I want to use points for that. Um, um, so it just kind of depends there. And then yeah, and then Capital One. But that's just the current state. I think mm -hmm. it's it could definitely change. And so much of it is just kind of like, what are you trying to book? What are your travel goals? Um, right. And that's just kind of where it's fit for me recently. It can definitely shift. Like I said, Chase could definitely jump in front of City when it comes to like, oh, I've got like a bunch of stay or like nights that I'm staying somewhere and there's some great Hyatt's there, but they're right. expensive. So I want to use points. All of a sudden, like City doesn't do anything for me there. So it totally. does fluctuate. Uh, but I do think generally Amex is coming out ahead for me because I book a lot of flights um, and it gives me a lot of great ways to do it at as few points as possible. Um, as yeah, I that may people, have transfer bonuses. I didn't have a whole yeah, lot of things during the bonuses. pandemic, but like City and American Express have, have had, oh, I'm sure we'll see them again, the, consistent the transfer, transfer bonuses. bonuses. Like Virgin Atlantic, I think it was like 30%. So I transferred 93,000, I think it was 93,000 Amex points to Virgin Atlantic so that I could use 120,000 Virgin Atlantic points for a round trip first class booking on ANA from ANA. like Washington to Japan. Like killer that's deal. Insane. That's insane. Right. So that's uh yeah, that's my that's my current state. Uh we'll see how things kind of evolve and what I need for travel coming up. Um, but it, for for what I always tell people is that <laughs> There's, there's no bad preference for travel or style. I know you fly a lot of economy, you fly a lot of yeah. domestic economy, you fly a European economy, like, great. Yeah. The, the, uh, where I say there's like, there are bad redemptions or bad ways to use points is when you have the option to use fewer and you just use more because you didn't take the three seconds to like ask someone or check. Um, yeah. But whatever it is, I think it's, it really just comes down to what you're doing like what are your goals um for people who want to stay in hyatt's and like park hyatt's in sydney and tokyo and you know all the really nice park hyatt's honestly like yeah chase points might be really useful to you because they're they're going to transfer over and you're not going to spend i mean i think the sit park hyatt sydney can be like a thousand dollars a night that's so, crazy like, i remember looking at one yeah. it's it's stupid expensive yeah use your thirty thousand hyatt points transfer those <laughs> chase points over like totally understand in that case it's just yes. not what I need most of the time. So for right. me, that's why Amex comes out ahead. Awesome. Love it. Tell everyone where we can find you. I, I know you got a lot going on. You're on Instagram. Yeah. You got the newsletter. Tell, tell everyone, plug your newsletter, plug your Instagram. Let's hear it. Yeah, for sure. So my website is straight to the points.co.co. Um, there's an Italian guy who owns the .com version still. Uh, 
<laughs> okay. Um, so that's where you can sign up for my newsletter. There's a free and a paid version. Highly recommend you check it out if you're into flying international uh, business or first class. And then I'm super active on Instagram at straight to the points is my handle there. Um, I post a few times a week. Uh, I do a lot of posts based on what people ask me. I just posted about how do you, we didn't even talk about Brex for small businesses and their transferable program, but just yeah. posted a, I just posted about the great ways, some great ways to use Brex points uh, just because I had a reader ask me about it. So pop over to Instagram, shoot me a DM, whatever. I, I try to answer all of them. So just come say hi. Absolutely. I think I, if you haven't checked out Spencer, you absolutely need to. Spencer is one of the best award travel experts out there, hands down. His newsletter, if you're someone who is a business class, international, first class traveler, premium cabins, definitely check out his newsletter. He takes all the hard work out for you and you get to just book the flights a lot easier. He does a lot of legwork for you, which like he says, when, when you're hunting for a word space, that takes hours of time. So, um, and he does that for you. So be sure to check him on Instagram. He's got great stuff, especially when he's traveling. Love following whenever he travels because he's got always the, was it the, what do you, what do you call them, slammers? Are you doing the slammer up in, slammer up in, time. Man, slammer time? The, the champagne slammer times, yeah. So be sure to check him out. It's got great content, great information. He's very active on the platforms and he answers a lot of reader questions. And you even heard, he does post directly based on what readers are asking. So be sure to check him out. Spencer, thank you so much for coming on, man. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Always a pleasure, Justin. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. So let us know, what do you think of Chase Ultimate Reward Points? Are they overvalued or are they valued just right where they need to be? Now, if you want to check out other videos on how to redeem membership reward points, check out this video right here where I give you some of the best ways to redeem your membership reward points. And if you like this video, consider sharing with someone. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.